So anyway, my mom and um, friends and the Anos Kansas, whatever, all together, would have some prayer, they have prayer, they have them all over, getting together to talk. My mom was like, gosh, you know, should I go? Because my mom's very impressed with, all, with the fact I've lost nearly 70 pounds and whatnot. And I, you know, I still have people thinking that I'm in my late 20s or early 30s as opposed to my mid 40s. Or, you know, early 40s, whatever. And she goes, Doris, you know, yeah, she's still a young girl. And my mom, in comparison to her at 66 or whatever, the others, you know, she was talking to me. And Matt with cancer, she goes, she goes, She's hardly a young girl. She's a middle-aged woman. But I fight against that. But I cannot be labeled a middle-aged woman. You know? I look to the stars. I look to Jennifer Lopez and Haley Berry. And, you know, they're not being called middle-aged women. They're being called hot as fucking shit. You know? Anyway. Now I'm going to sit down. I'm going to sit down because it's easier. I'm standing up and far away. I don't know if my mic come up and hear me. It's a bad storm outside. I just want to see. You want to see the bad storm? Bad. Providing that there's, you know, some physical attraction, I can definitely be persuaded. What that means is, I might not initially be attracted to a guy, but providing that he fits two criteria, and these are just un unwavering in me. He can't be obese, and he can't be shorter than me. So for me, I mean, probably an inch would be all right, an inch shorter or something, you know, I can do that. But you know what I mean? He can't be much shorter. Um, I can be persuaded even if I'm not initially physically attracted to a guy because if a guy has confidence and knows how to push my buttons, well, you know, I can be persuaded. Um, I care more about having a connection with somebody on it, you know. But, but anyway, back to at this point, there's only a certain guy that I would want to even be with. And he, I want to be with a guy who. would talk dirty in my ear all the time not just during times when it's time to have sex whatever you know what I mean like I'm public you know I want to be with a guy who, who would you know touch me all the time and not, not 
not burnt, you know, totally, totally, like, you know, in a vulgar way, but, but you know what I mean. I know exactly what I want and need. And the thing is, even if I can't have love, and I'm, the reason I can't have love is not because I'm not lovable. It's not because, even though, not because some guy couldn't fall in love with me. It's because I am broken and damaged. I can't give in that way. I will never trust another living soul, not even my own mother, who unfortunately, sadly, has repeatedly proven to be untrustworthy. And I forgive her for that because I know it's because of her sickness and she's manipulated and controlled and fearful, but still she's proved to be untrustworthy. I can make my mom promise not to say something and Miriam will get it out of my mom and I'll say, Mom, why'd you tell me? Well, she tricked me, you know? I have a deep-rooted sexual hunger in me that has never been satisfied. And that's a scary fucking thing, because even Donald, this was back before I was with Donald, you know, even back when one of my one-night stands once said, you know, to me, you don't need porn, a slight breeze will turn you on. Now think about it. I was that way back before I even met Donald. He put in his stupid analysis of lard tape, um, you know, you know, he talks about how I'm analytical and anal and all this writing and thinking is, is concretized or concrete, you know, blah, 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 whatever, by the immediacy of sexuality. And he was always betrayed the way to get through Laura, to Laura, to go right for a cro through a crotch. And, and you know, I know that's a sad thing, you know, because, you know, it's not that easy to, you know, take advantage of you and blah, blah, blah. Okay, so if that was all the case before, Donald's a total fucking joke for year after year after year after year, after year. I mean, like I told, like about those, those, you know, the ones who just want to put it in you, selfish, whatever, at least they love sex. They might, they're, they're terrible, and they suck at it, they're selfish, but at least, I mean, I mean, Donald was, he, he, I live in fear that Donald's going to decide to come and, you know, kill me one one day, someday, you know. I have enemies and they called, they, you know, I have enemies who could tell Donald where I am. You know, they could. They did it in L.A. was to stop them now. Fucking prick. Um. Oh yeah, I have a deep, pretty sexual hunger in me. But at this point, I'm all messed up. And what that means is I would need a guy who is just so unbelievably sexual and into sex and transcending. Cause I want to just connect with somebody in an animalistic way. Um, he would have to just, with his own darkness and vulgarness or whatever, you know, he'd have to ease my fears and turn me into the animal that I want to be, you know. I've never had that. Never in my life. Donald was a joke and a nice, beautiful